what's up y'all welcome back to my channel this video is kind of impromptu because i i just didn't plan to do a video today it's thursday like who am i but um i wanted to talk to you guys a little bit because i know that there are a lot of other busy mamas out there like me um who don't really prioritize taking care of ourselves usually if it's the choice between um doing our nails or our hair or you know our skincare routine or reading or something like that exercise usually we'll choose that last over taking care of our business our family our husband our you know our house whatever it is so i'm learning to kind of have that balance and to prioritize self-care as just as important as the other things in my life because they do energize me for the other things in my life so today i want to just kind of share with you um, my natural nail care natural nail care routine and some of the things that I do to kind of keep my nails pretty long term and um, you know what I do to, to just kind of take care of them help them to grow be healthy um, so if you're interested in that keep on watching okay so I'm water fasting today so I have a little bit extra time to um, do some of the things that, you know, are good for me. And I also have just some mental clarity that I'm putting to get use. So when it comes to me just prioritizing this a little bit more, um, when I started this whole self-care journey, there were a few things that I needed to, I felt like I needed to cover my bases on. Having my hair be simple, pretty, uh, and, um, easy to take care of at all times, having my nails be simple, pretty, and easy to take care of at all times, or most times, because we're realistic, um, having my body be taken care of, exercised, looking good and on point, um, just the small things that help me feel best about myself. So my skin taken care of, because when it's not taken care of, it's breaking out and I'm looking crazy, okay? So those are the few things that really matter the most to me. Um, so when it comes down to my nails, I've always been like a nail girl, like I always love nails, I always, you know, painted my nails and stuff, but then I would always end up looking less put together because they were chipped. So <laughs> I stopped doing it for a long time. Um, I was talking to someone, one of my friends, I think, I, I can't really remember how I kind of got on this train of thought, but I was like, I can just get me a gel nail kit and just do it myself. And so towards the beginning of this year, I started doing it myself and started doing gel nail manicures. And I'm like, dog, I could have been doing this, but they last definitely up to two weeks or more. Um, they don't really chip like that. I'm cleaning the bathrooms, I'm washing dishes, I'm cooking, stuff like that. So they don't really chip like that. Um, and my natural nails were growing, but they just still felt kind of flimsy. Like they, they didn't feel at their healthiest. And I also wanted something that when my natural nails, like when one of them broke, I could um, make them all the same length because my nails can grow pretty nicely. So I was doing poly gel nails. But the poly gel nails, it just, after some time, like it takes a long time. It's There are some disadvantages for me. So I really want to take the time to just cultivate my natural nails, make sure they're healthy, make sure they're strong and nice in and of themselves without any other enhancement. And um, so that's my journey right now. So I've been taking care of my natural nails. I'm gonna show you in this video how I kind of, I'm doing this kind of vlog style. I hope y'all don't mind, chit chat, okay? Um, how I do my natural nails. I'm gonna show you step by step. And I've had to trim them down like they were pretty long they were as long as my poly gel nails <laughs> so um I've trimmed them down I'm really on the journey of just making sure that they're healthy making sure that they're strong shiny you know without anything on them just pretty in and of themselves so that's what I've been doing um today this is how they look isn't that such a pretty pink oh I'm not even a pink girl these are so cute so this is how they turned out. I'm gonna do the same thing to my toenails so I kind of walk you through that process. And um, let me know what is in your self-care routine. What is it that you love to do for yourself that benefits no one else, only for you? 
Is it reading? Is it um, uh, walking, exercise, journaling? What is it? Like doing your hair? Are you that girl? Like what is it that really um, makes you feel fulfilled and energized? I'm ready to move on to helping someone else or, you know, handling your daily tasks with ease. So. Hey, beautiful. Get before we get. <laughs> hey, beautiful. Now, before we get into the video, please do make sure to subscribe for future self-care and fitness uploads and hit the bell for notifications so that you know when I upload a video because YouTube be tripping. OK. So these are my natural nails. They are somewhat fresh from a poly gel set. I did trim them down a little bit even before now, but you can see that they are not super sturdy. They don't look their best. They're not super healthy. I do have a nail care routine now that's inspired by Heritage 93 here on YouTube. Y'all, her channel is awesome and her nails are absolutely gorgeous. I was actually inspired to just go ahead and take off my poly gel nails and start getting my natural nails together because of her channel. So I'm soaking my nails in warm water sea salt and baking soda and what this does is brighten and strengthen the natural nails and I did go ahead and put both hands in but I'm just showing one and it did you know definitely clean my nails brighten my nails and it made my nails feel stronger as I'm like cutting them and trimming them later I could tell there was a definite um, strength to my natural nails which I really appreciate so this was super relaxing guys if you don't try for anything else it's very relaxing okay so I let my hands soak in this water while I read a book so it was probably about 10-15 minutes and um, I just really let them sit in the water until I felt like you know that my hands were nice and relaxed that my uh, cuticles were softened and ready to be removed and that my nails were strengthened by the sea salt basically it's the minerals in the sea salt and baking soda that help to strengthen your natural nails so this was a great great addition to my nail care routine And this was made even more relaxing by a really good book. If y'all would like more information on some of the titles that I love, let me know in the in the comment section below. So I'm showing you that here I'm doing a sugar scrub and I basically just mixed together some uh, organic cane sugar and some olive oil. And what this does is it really helps to nourish the cuticles, your hands and nails and scrape away any dead skin on the surface of your hands and nails. So it made my hands super soft. And it also did help to hydrate and condition my nails while they were in the water. So I did put them right back in the water after this to let it sit for a little while. My hands felt amazing. Okay, so I did the same thing for my feet as well and they just felt so good i'm like i need to do this every time i do a manicure or pedicure this is awesome so definitely try the sugar scrub every time i, I think it's definitely worth the time that it takes and my hands just felt really good for the rest of the day so definitely try this out I did do a nice hand massage while I had all of this oil on my hands and you know after that good scrub my hands were just so hydrated and soft I just went ahead and really massaged that in and took my time with it I did not rush this process do this while your children are asleep honey okay um, this process took maybe about 30 minutes total the soaking and the scrub and every second was worth it so make sure that you have enough time so maybe do this at night or early in the morning and your body will thank you for the time that you spend really taking your time okay
I did take the time to go ahead and scrub those cuticle areas gently and I think what this does is just provides more circulation as well as nourishment from the oils and it also helps to clear again any dead skin that may be um, still sitting on the surface of that area. Okay, so let me let you know some of the things that you will need. You need some cotton balls, you will need some primer, and this is the Acid Free Pro Bond Primer by Gelish. I also have a beautiful paint color or gel nail color. I have a little brush for gel, and then I also have some nail clippers. These are the baby ones. And um, I have a few more things, some alcohol. I use this just to clean my nails before I begin. I have some acetone and I use that mainly for the same thing so here is my light and I showed you guys that in a previous video it's a LED light I also have base coat and top coat by model ones and I found my big girl toenail clipper <laughs> so I'm gonna use that to cut my nails also I have some nail art supplies so I have a little brush some glitter some gems and I didn't get around to using them but in the future I will be using those for my manicures as well so this is how my nails look I am just taking the time to go ahead and scrape off any remaining dead skin that may be on my nail plate and also to just shape my nails so I push the skin back um, or my skin that kind of hangs over my nail I push that back to expose new growth and to give me a little bit more space to paint it also scrapes off any dead skin that may cause lifting later on because if you paint over dead skin and a lot of times you can't see it with your naked eye but if you paint over it it will lift so your polish will you know lift and ship and that's a lot of times that's the reason why our manicures just don't last so I go ahead and push that skin back I clean the nail plate and I have a real cuticle pusher guys but the rounded end of my um, tweezers worked that day because I could not find it <laughs> so um, definitely use a cuticle pusher but in this case this worked just fine I just wanted a gentle push and I can show you my nails today a week later they are still fresh I do have a chip on one I was cleaning up for my sister's graduation and one of my nails did chip but other than that the rest of them look great so this definitely works you really want to take your time with this I put it in real time so you can see how gentle I am with my hands and I really just you don't want to damage the nail or anything you want to go ahead and clean underneath it clean over it with the cuticle pusher and really just take your time all of this is about taking your time uh, my nails do have some previous damage one my pinky got smashed in something and um, had a little bruise under the nail and a little of the nail separated from the nail plate so I just make sure to always clean that out soaking it is good and um, I just you know cut it down as much as I could after you see this clip so always make sure to keep your nails clean free of bacteria and typically you use a tool like this to actually remove any um, cuticle or epidicum skin but I didn't do it this time I was like eh Last time I got lots of hangnails, so obviously I don't know how to use that tool. <laughs> but this is how my natural nails are looking. I did trim them down a little bit more. I wanted to make sure that they would be as healthy as possible, so I just kept trimming until I felt like it was healthy. But you can see it took quite a bit to trim, and um, my natural nails did get stronger from that treatment so definitely try it out if you are looking to grow out your natural nails because it does work
So essentially, I just cut all my nails to a basic square shape. And this is a shape that I feel like is easily sustained as your nails grow longer. A lot of times I would make them somewhat too thin and then the sides would start to chip or break or be brittle or snag on things. So I find that just keeping them wider helps them to have more strength. So it's like with a false nail, you have that apex. With a natural nail, you have an apex, but it's definitely a lot smaller. So the strength is in kind of the width and thickness or healthiness of your natural nail. So making sure that it's strong, making sure that it's also flexible, and then making sure I keep them as wide as possible is a good formula for growth. Now I took my file and just kind of went over the cuts that I made or the trims that I made and this basically just kind of rounds the ends a little bit so that I'm not you know scratching and <laughs> hurting myself leaving scratch marks and my husband always asked me to scratch his back so I had to make sure my nails aren't too sharp. <laughs> Now I'm taking a very soft old file and it's extremely gentle because it's worn down quite a bit. But what this does on the surface of the nail is it just um, takes the shine off. So any extra oils or anything like that, it takes it off of the direct surface of the nail plate. And that also helps to prevent lifting later on once you put the gel polish onto your nails. So you just want to take off like the like you don't want to take or thin down your nail at all what this does is just creates tiny grooves and take some of the shine off the top layer of the nail so this is how they look that's the square shape you know you can make it more perfect I'm sure you'll be able to see it a little better when they're longer but at this point I'm happy that my nails are healthy again I'm happy that um, what's left is a really nice strong nail Okay, so here is the Pro Bond, Pro Bond Primer from Gelish. And I've been using this ever since I started um, doing the gel polish. And it really does help to keep the polish on your nails and um, to keep it from chipping, lifting, all of that stuff. So the primer definitely is worth it as a must have. So I put the primer on. I just, you know, it's no particular specific way you have to do this, but I just go ahead and put this on and let it dry. It does not need to cure under the light. So I just put it on and let it dry for about 20 seconds before I go ahead and put on the gel polish. Now this is the base coat and this is by Model 1 so I'll put a link to that in the description box. But uh, y'all seen me use this before. This is the um, enhanced base coat and it's nice. It definitely helps to keep the polish on and um, it's pretty thick. So with this you have to be very careful not to flood the cuticle and not to kind of have drippings all on the side of your nail. So definitely go back in if you need to with the alcohol or acetone on a, on a brush and just go around the cuticle area, around the sidewalls and make sure that you didn't get any drippage. Let's just say this base coat is juicy, so be careful. So it's super shiny once you put it on there. I go ahead and cure this for about 30 seconds um, to about 45 seconds. And 
it leaves somewhat of a tacky layer on the top and that's good because it does help your gel polish to go ahead and stick to that tacky layer now this is a beautiful color I guess you can call it fuchsia I'm not sure but it's like a it's like a hot pink color and it looks beautiful on melanin skin tones okay so if you are brown skinned if you have golden undertones it's a beautiful color and this is 1477 by Moy Base or I'm not sure how you pronounce the name of the brands but uh, my sister found this on Amazon so this is they have like a few different colors quite a few different colors and when they first came they were very thin and they just kind of ran a lot and I didn't like them I kept them in my bag didn't use them but now that they've sat for maybe two months or so they've kind of thickened up and they work a lot better so check out this brand but be careful when you first get it because they seem kind of watery so I just make sure that when I'm painting I avoid the skin you want to avoid the skin at all costs if you paint the gel polish onto your skin once the nail starts to grow it's going to lift right up so you want to make sure that you're just getting it on the nail only and avoiding the skin so you want to leave like a tiny gap between your skin and the gel polish now with this polish it's still not super thick um, but I did just get away with two coats because it's all I had time for so I put on those two coats and then I did the enhanced top coat by model ones and um, it leaves it nice and shiny you don't have any like if something gets on your nail it comes right off so it's nice and slick too and that just works really well with these polishes So you'll see, just like with other things, slow strokes work best. You want to take your time and make sure that you really get around the cuticle area. Take your time and make sure that you are just letting off a bit of polish at a time. So you should have thin coats and cure between your coats. So you'll see I'm just taking a small brush and I'm taking a bit of um, alcohol or acetone and I'm actually going around the edges. So if I got any of the gel polish on my skin, I just go ahead and wipe that off. And you also want to check on the back of your nails too. So if the underside of your nail has any excess polish on it or anything like that, you want to get that off too unless you intended to put it there okay so this is how they turned out my hand is ashy but my nails are pretty you can see that this color like really pops especially with that top coat it is super gorgeous and I'll also insert some of the pictures that I posted on social media of this gel polish manicure so definitely check out um, these polishes check out some of the products that I have listed in the description box because they give you a flawless gel manicure every time and it does last for most people say seven to ten days but i would say at least ten days so check me out in the next video i will see y'all peace